we can get to some teaching things. And we've, uh, Peyton told us she was going somewhere, now she's going somewhere. Yeah, so uh, still going to Africa. I was going to go to Kenya, now I'm not. Um, yeah, so when I spoke last time, Cindy's Hope was here. And she was like, you probably shouldn't travel alone as a white woman. And so she told me to get in contact with her. And I looked a little more into it. And I've just been praying about it. And a lot of things have been falling into place with that. So instead of going to Kenya in June, I'm going to go to Rwanda for two weeks with a group that's going to Cindy's Hope. When, when, when is that? Did you say? June? July 26th through August 6th. Okay, great. So, yep. And is that an orphanage? What is she doing? Is that what it is over there? Um, there is a few different things. What I'm specifically going to be going to is the schools. They've built uh, three schools. They're really struggling with the student-to-teacher ratio. Um, and so I'm just going to serve there, just kind of like a VBS type thing. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Good. So when you were up here that night, you were like, this is what I know now. And so you have adjusted. That's so yeah. funny. It happened that night. Cindy was here that night. Yeah. That's hilarious. So yeah. that's so great. So she preached. That. Yeah, so Cindy's connected with Reliance, doing some amazing work. Little, little firecracker out of Oklahoma, I think, is what she is. And so, Father, we thank you for shifting this, uh, Lord, this, this path for your glory's sake. Thank you that Peyton's right on target. We thank you, Father, for her connection with Cindy that night. As she came obeying you, following the breadcrumb, and she found another one. And we just thank you for divine appointments that happen in this place. Um, God, we just pray you bless Peyton, a provision for everything she needs. And uh, Lord, we just ask, Father, for the user for your glory. Thank you for her sensitivity to shift her plans. This is not about our pride. This is about obedience to you. And so, Lord, thank you for her, and thank you for this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. You yelled something. So you're going to serve with Kingdom Equip? Get to go to Kingdom Equip? Yay. I'll take that mic if you want. Yeah, great. Good job. Isa, awesome. Come here. Since we did a plug for Kingdom Equip, you're going to do real quick. Ellie, tell us what you're up to. You're going to the big unreached area of? South Dakota. South Dakota. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so I was back in South Dakota in December for my outreach, and we worked with the youth. Um, and I fell in love with the youth group. And really about a year and a half ago, the Lord was stirring in my heart for youth and youth group, like kids, kids, whatever. And I didn't really know what to do with it, but I just kind of left it alone. And then on outreach, we worked with them. And I just remember like falling in love with the youth. And so, um, yeah, I went on to Minnesota and Louisiana. And then um, the youth pastor back in South Dakota called me. And it was like, hey, will you come back and serve? And I was like, yeah, of course, like 1,000%. Um, and then all of the teams got back to um, get the Kansas City base. And we um, graduation morning, we did prophetic words over each other. And, um, yeah, someone wrote, I don't know who, someone wrote um, on my sheet of paper and said, I see you standing on the stage mm. speaking to, to the youth. Mm. And I was like, oh, my gosh. This is exactly where the Lord has called me to That's be. Awesome. Um, yeah, so about a few weekends ago, I went to South Dakota to speak at their church. Um, and in that week, I was just praying about, like, yeah, like what the Lord wanted me to share. And I really, like, felt in my heart that the um, South Dakota is, like, super hungry for the Lord. And mm -hmm. I just, like, felt that, like, stirring. And um, so Travis is his name who I'm going to be working with. He's the youth pastor. And we're going to a camp in, oh, don't remember, um, Sioux Falls, that's what it's called. Um, and <laughs> we're working with the Native American, like, reservation, and it's what we went in <clears throat> December. Anyways, the guy, like, directed, like, over that, he called Travis and was like, hey, um, I'm done feeding, or I'm done um, feeding people who are not going after Jesus. I want, like, people who are hungry for the Lord, I want them to go after Jesus. And Travis called me the next day and was like, just told me all of that. And the day before, I literally, like, felt that from the Lord. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. And so um, driving into South Dakota, literally, I was like, yeah, there has to be, like, a stirring here mm. and, like, a hunger for the Lord. And so, yeah, I'm just excited to, like, go back. I leave in, like, two and a half weeks yeah. um, just to, yeah, go and speak to the youth and just really hang out with them and, like, I want them to truly know their identity in the Lord. 
Mm. And, like, that's my big heart. That's of awesome. just, like, trying to figure that out in them and not trying to figure it out, like, for themselves in the world, but trying to figure it out through Jesus and with you. That's so, awesome. I remember when heart. you were just trying to figure that out. Now you're helping a generation uh, figure it out. That's just so cool. Progress. It's so great. It's so great. Good. Father, thank you for Ellie. Thank you, God, for that she has found you and she is finding her identity in you. And on the way, she's telling, helping others. And so we just pray for a grace for that very thing she said right there at the end. We're asking for grace and anointing for her to help young people find their identity in Christ. Uh, Bible verses, revelations, right words at the right time to speak to them. And Lord, we just pray she'd bring a deposit, not from Kansas, but from heaven into South Dakota, Lord. Thank you, God, for this. We love every mission to the, to the neighbor or to the nations. It's all the same if it's your calling. So we thank you for Ellie obeying what you've called her to in Jesus' name. Go get them. Amen. Nasser, if you want to make your way up here, and Glory Bell, come here real quick. So yeah, we do a been, plug. They mentioned this little thing you do. Yeah, Kingdom King Equip. So Glory's been running Kingdom Equip and telling Jesse and I what to do, and so that's no, pretty good. I'm just messing with Glory's. Yeah. It's, so we've been praying. We had like a specific number that we felt like God wanted to bring to Kingdom Equip, and so like for we got up to twenty to twenty five, and then no one was signing up. And again, we trust God for that. Like in some ways, we're great grateful but in the last two and a half weeks we had like another 20 sign up so we got about 49 coming and so we're excited so there's a big group from Wichita and then a lot of Tabor students so June 4th to 13th we'll be equipping at Tabor love partnering with Rusty and Debbie there and yeah just going after kingdom identity the kingdom story Nostra is going to be teaching Sam and you're going to yeah. be teaching me yeah, that's well, awesome. He's going to be teaching me that is true that's good we announced that that's good Nostra and Sam will be you're teaching welcome team. That's it. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Okay, great. Um, so I think Nasser's actually going to leave this time. We've already we sent him. So. He sent a video a few weeks ago and then said he would go and <laughs> he's going to tell us what happened. Yeah. But it, it's an awesome story and actually an equipping moment for how you're supposed to obey when the Lord speaks to you. So tell yes. us what's up. So yes. three days before uh, we're supposed to get on a plane to Sudan, had all the arrangements, <clears> got the, the visa, which getting into North Sudan um, right now is really tricky, and it was a miracle of God that I even got the visa and all of that, and everything was set to go, um, and through a whole extended set of things um, that I won't go into. But the Lord basically grabbed my attention and just uh, prompted me that, that I should ask again about the trip and the details of the trip and the timing of the trip, and I felt like thought well, this is all figured out but okay and I just uh, invited a small group of intercessors just to take 24 hours let's just pray fast as you feel led and just ask the Lord like just for some confirmation or direction um, and after the 24 hours uh, two two really clear things stood out one do not travel during Ramadan which is what we're in the midst of right now um, and I am protecting you mm. that was from the Lord and so I'm like okay, I'm not going to argue with that. So canceled flights, you know, all this kind of stuff. I had to rebook all these things. Re um, refunds totally. It was perfect. Nah, no, Didn't no, we lost some money, oh, okay. but um, it's the Lord's money. Yes. And so I'm assuming he's okay with that. I think he has lots more. Um, and so we're not going to bankrupt him over this. Uh, and so we're just out of obedience. And so we just expressed to all our partners, we expressed to the um, you know, because the, the, we're going to serve the church in Sudan. And so had to, like, they had all th everything arranged. And we're like, we're sorry. We're not trying to be crazy, you know, chaotic, moving things at the last minute. But can we do it at this time? And, and everybody was okay with it. Mm -hmm. And it was all right. Mm -hmm. um, felt really silly. Um, but it was more important. I, I've learned the lesson over the years that it's much more important to be obedient and look foolish than to try to save any measure of your pride um, and walk into something that's outside the will of the Lord because it's just absolutely dangerous. And we're talking about, you know, stuff in this part of the world that can be deadly to walk outside the will of the Lord. And so that's what we did. Awesome. And so now I am scheduled to leave this Friday, um, which is <clears throat> awesome. I'm actually getting on the plane just as Ramadan ends. <laughs> so I am obeying the Lord, getting there, and we will be gathering with, you know, uh, representatives of, of seven different church groups in Sudan um, and we're going to start the first day still. The plan is just to pray, seek the Lord, seek his agenda for our time together. And now that's happening. Um, 
on Pentecost. So here I'm going to be with all these wonderful church leaders in an upper room just praying, asking the Holy Spirit to speak to us on Pentecost. And I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not saying tongues of fire are going to fall from heaven, but I'm not saying they're not. Um, I'm just going expectant the Lord's going to do something. He's, he's arranged this for us, and we're just going to wait on him. So good. Tim, can you see me pointing at you? Can you come pray over him real quick? <laughs> Sorry, Tim. <laughs> we're, somebody guide and lead Tim yeah. up here. I just, Which, Tim's been connected. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and, I, you know, Tim, did you know that Sudan, when you take, like, the whole thing, like, north and south, it borders exactly nine nations. Really? Yeah. Nine so that was nations. interesting. Everybody knows Tim's got a nine-nation mandate yeah. that's controlled his life. Interesting, huh? So cool. Yeah, so so probably good. coincidence. That's awesome. So I'm going to have Tim pray over him, but we wanted to hear you to hear that. It feels like there's a theme. Peyton and Nasser all shifted gears to go right where the Lord wanted them to go. I love that. Tim, as you go. Amen. Father, we, we lift our brother to you, yes. Lord, to, we lift Daisy and the kids, mm-hmm. Lord, to, we, we, we pray your kingdom come and your will be done. Yes. Lord, as you move him, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, we pray you'd release authority, Lord, you release um, power, uh, most of all, you'd release the fragrance of Jesus, Lord, mm. and we pray for an undergirding, a strengthening of the leaders there. Lord, that you would give our brother um, uh, everything he needs. We trust you for it, Lord. Yeah. Protect him and keep him, Lord, to uh, protect those who travel with him, Lord, uh, those he will be with. And would you release, yeah. Lord, your spirit, Lord. We need your spirit, Lord. We need Pentecost, Lord, uh, in North Sudan, yes. Lord. Uh, so um, your will be done, Lord. We know yeah. you give your spirit without limit. And so mm-hmm. we pray that you would you would truly do that yes. in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless our brother as mm-hmm. he goes out. Amen. 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 Good. Well, Lord willing, he'll be on a plane unless something else for their information. Nasser's going to be back in a minute, going to help teach. Um, we, uh, Matthew. Matthew wanted to speak out of a, he just was telling me about a moment, and he said a sentence that I thought, oh, that's such a great sentence. And I wanted him just kind of to speak to us about it, because, again, it's a powerful tension thing in it. Yeah, and so as we talk a lot often about suffering here, and um, so it's something we know we need to go through, and, and this phrase weakness, and I hate that. I really actually have struggled with different health things, um, but I, I have in the last years developed, I don't know fully what it is, but when I, and I don't think it's anxiety fully, but when I'm about to step in faith, I get something just right here that feels really weak. And so with Angie and I stepping out with Hillsboro, and there's just a lot more around that, like it's just been coming at different times, it'll come and then it'll, it'll lift. And for sure, when the spirit comes on, like I can feel this, yeah, strength. And I love feeling that all the time. And so I do love healing, ministry, deliverance, love your kingdom come now. And I don't like always persevering and enduring. And so Tuesday morning, I meet with um, Jesse and I and the Dean guys. And it's like really strong as we're talking about kingdom equip in Hillsboro. I'm like, dang it, I do not like this. And so I'm sharing that. I'm making jokes about it because to me, sometimes humor helps. And joking, yeah, all kinds of things. And then Sam prays. And then Aaron Wallace comes and he says, hey, I felt that um, weakness when, when I had to step out in faith when they moved from the campus here to Reliance. He said, let's spend some time together. So that afternoon I went and he said, what if this is from the Lord to purify you? Instead of, why, why don't you, instead of just trying to get rid of it, why don't you actually embrace it? And if this is a thorn of the flesh for this season or forever that the Lord's like actually reminding you, like you actually can't do this. I'm like, okay. So we had a great time connecting. I'm driving back. Maybe he went, I think, watched Ethan golf. I'm back on Kellogg. And the Lord's like, so do you want me to fix your problems or prepare you for eternity? Okay, Lord. So, yeah, do you want me to fix your problems? Meaning, do you want me just to get rid of that weakness right now? Which, and he's like, or do you want me to prepare you for eternity? And, and so let me read this verse. Uh, Revelation 19. It says, hallelujah, or let me go to verse 6 here. Then I heard what seemed to be a voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the land has come, 
and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. And so while we may not be enduring suffering like we're not or may see or others, and, and I think I'm tangibly thinking about that, but it just was a shift is like, Lord, I'm okay to allow whatever weakness and want that because I, I want to reign with you. I want to be strong someday in heaven, but I need to, yeah, embrace this. So something I'm learning, it's like when you get a fresh word, you know that, but suddenly it's like hits you in a deep way. Yeah, so I wanted you to pray for everybody and in, 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 in around this verse, and I pull the cord on this. Many of the teachers are going to want to jump in on this, but it says, for this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond comparison. Just to make sure you know that was Bible, what he heard from the Holy Spirit. This, this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us, and it's an investment program into and making an eternal weight of glory. So we just pray for us because we still, we do believe the Lord delivers you from the pain and from the pressure, but we also believe he allows it often to uh, get us prepared for another life. Yeah, so Jesus, we submit again to your lordship. And God, we, we want to be a bride that's pure and yes. holy, that will reign in intercession, reign ministering to you around the throne forever and ever. And so God, in places where we feel vulnerable weakness maybe yeah. it's physical sufferings things that we have cried for deliverance and we do believe jesus that that jesus your kingdom does break in and there's moments where suddenly you do just deliver us from something but god as i've heard stories even this week of suffering different saints who eight years ten years had gone through real affliction god i'm asking god for those in this room that have faced it we ask for endurance and perseverance in this yeah. moment. Meet us, Jesus. We want to be prepared to reign with you. So, Jesus, we don't want just our problems fixed. Mm. We want to learn to reign. And so teach us, have mercy on us. In your name, amen. Amen. Good job, buddy. So I want to get into this because I'm going to leave some time for lab time. But Nasser and I are going to lay out and, and launch what I think might be a bit of a season about the kingdom of God for us as a family and again, you test that. I don't want to lead your spiritual life, you know what I mean? I, but I think it is important that you kind of watch what happens here and themes that begin to come out in various places um, because the Lord is usually teaching generally the whole body of Christ in certain, certain subjects. And so Nostra and I were visiting the other day, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a two- to three-minute thing, and then Nostra will be ready to jump, and then I'm going to come back and uh, finish. But introduction to the gospel of the kingdom. Um, G, John the Baptist came, Matthew 3, 2. His primary message, the forerunner was, repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Matthew 4, 17, Jesus then begins his ministry after baptism. Temptation says, from this time on, he began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Mark 1, 14 through 15, Mark will write it like this. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel, the euangelion of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom, the basilea of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And so there is how, I showed you how Matthew wrote it, but Mark writes it like that, but it's the same deal, the gospel of the kingdom. That's what Jesus proclaimed. And we have lived in evangelical worlds in a culture of salvation. I'm pro-salvation, but salvation is the entryway into the message that Jesus brought, which was the gospel of the kingdom. It was the it was the euangelion of the basilea. It was the good news of the dynamic rule. That's what basilea means, okay? It's the dynamic right to rule of God. So the word kingdom is used 119 times in the gospels, all four gospels using the word. As a comparison, the word church is used three times and all in Matthew. doesn't mean church is not important. It just means that kingdom is the dominant theme of our, of, our, of our king. And so the point being that the kingdom of God was a, or is the, primary theme in ministry of Jesus. The gospel of the kingdom proclaimed to all nations, Matthew 24, 14, is going to trigger the end of the age. It said in Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to the ethnos, not just uh, United Nations nations, but people groups, and then the end will come. The trigger of the end of the age is this gospel of the kingdom, this euangelion of the basalia, <laughs> being manifest and faithfully proclaimed to every people group and tribe in the earth. So, it is really important 
that we know what the gospel of the kingdom is. And listen, as Nasser walks up here, um, I, I don't want to, we, sometimes we, we're doing sermons and we're making such a point, we're, we're, we're diminishing the importance of something else. I'm not dimin- diminishing the gospel of salvation, the gospel of grace. We love that. We both love that. But the gospel of the kingdom is more. And um, it's important that we Westerners understand what that is. And this brother has some insight in that. I do. I do. And it's funny, even in Matthew, if you just go a few verses past what, what you had on there, Matthew 4, um, 23, and it says, this is talking about Jesus, and he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming, get this, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So just keep that in the back of your brain. So let's this is, this is the problem with the language that we have in the church is we've, we've had it for so long. It means something to us just based on, on what we associate with, with the Christian life now, but whatever values we think you know, are, are most important to us um, about uh, relationship with Jesus. Um, and, and then the gospel becomes those things. And so it's not surprising when we put a lot of emphasis in folks and we have for for quite a while now, at least in you know, like the evangelical streams of Christianity, on, on the point of the gospel is getting people saved um, here on earth so they can spend eternity in heaven someday. And then that, that's, that's the gospel, that's it. So if you're just you know, preaching people like turn or burn, um, that's, you're preaching the gospel. Um, and that would have made no sense at all uh, 2,000 years ago. Um, and I don't think that's the sense that, that Matthew means it, and, and actually when, when Matthew and all four gospel writers are using this Greek word, euangelion, this isn't a new word. It's actually a word that has a ton of historical baggage to it. And, and most of it, actually, I would say from a Jewish perspective, not good. That's not a good word. You don't like that word. Um, and, and it really goes back um, about... 300, 350 years um, before the, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem to this guy named Alexander the Great. How many of you have heard of Alexander? Quite a few people. Like, that's pretty impressive. 2,500, 2500 years later, we still know who he is. He must have been a great guy. Um, Alexander is famous because he was the first person to conquer what, what was basically all the known world. Uh, uh, in his day, and he did it at a really young age. He, he, and, he, and he conquered kingdom after kingdom after kingdom, absorbing them into this ever-expanding empire of Greece. And, and Alexander, as he did this, as he, as he came into each new territory, he, his messengers proclaimed out ahead of him, Alexander has come with a euangelion. And he didn't invent this word, but he was the first person to really press it and push it and use it in this way. And, and what euangelion means is good news. But this is the specific kind of good news that they were proclaiming as Alexander's empire was rolling over the whole face of the earth. This is your good news. There is a new king and a new kingdom. And you now have a choice to make. You're either in or out. And if you're out, this kingdom's going to come anyway, and it's just going to roll over you. But if you're in, this is good news for you, because Greece is here, and we bring with us wonderful things that you've never heard before. But once you get a taste of them, you'll wonder how you ever lived without them. We're going to bring you public health care, public education, entertainment. We're going to put theaters in all of your cities, and sports. Oh, wait till you guys get a load of this. You'll be obsessed. These are the four pillars of Greek Hellenism. And Alexander said, this is the good news, guys. And there's, there's a spiritual dimension to this because what, what the Greeks figured out was is that for most of human history in their eyes and the rest of the nations, Mankind had been struggling and laboring under the heel of all these gods that were petty and, and often seemed very you know, capricious, wicked, 
jealous and it was hard to get their attention. And the Greeks said, why can't we be gods? Why can't we elevate man to a, to a level of godhood where we can rule the world, we can do things our way, we can take care of ourselves, we'll pay the gods lip service, we know how to keep them happy. You just bribe them with enough sacrifices and prayers and they stay out of your hair. And then we can get back to the business of improving humanity. And it was the birth of humanism. And that was Alexander's good news. You can all get a slice of the pie if you just come and join with me. And guess what? There's a reason why Alexander conquered all of the known world. This was a really attractive offer. This was wonderful news, really good news. This was the first really worldwide euangelion. And when he died at a young age, and his empire was divided up. Every, every great king, every, every would-be emperor was always walking in the shadow of Alexander the Great. Every one of them wanted to be Alexander, wanted to, to come. And so it's no surprise that when Rome finally rose to replace Greece, from the very first Caesar on to every Caesar ever since, all the way up to Augustus Caesar and at the time of the birth of Christ, every Caesar, when he came to power, said, guess what? Send the heralds out. I have a new Galleon, a new gospel. Good news, the old emperor is dead. Long live the new emperor. And when Rome came, they said, Chris, I know Greece was good, but this is even better because now we're gonna bring you peace. This is the gospel of peace. That's what Rome preached. And the, Rome, the peace of Rome was, you submit to Rome and the lordship of Rome and the lordship of the Caesar who was viewed and called the son of God made flesh. That's what they called him, and all the statues and temples. And, it, and his arrival in your city was called the Advent. And when he came and visited your city, if there was a disaster, if, if there was brokenness in the city and the people, he would leave a great deposit of money, and then he would go away for a time. But then there was a parousia, there was a second coming, when the emperor, when the Caesar would return again to see what did you do with what I invested in you, and there would be a judgment. This was all the baggage wrapped up with Evangelion. And so, do you understand how subversive, how provocative it is when Jesus not only comes and says, repent for the kingdom is at hand, but now he says that this kingdom that I'm talking about, this is a new Evangelion. Guess what, guys? You need, the reason you need to repent is because there is a new kingdom breaking out, and it's now here. And there's a new king, because you can't have a new kingdom without a new king. But what does this kingdom offer? As, and that's why I think what Matthew's getting at when he says, you know, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. This, this kingdom is addressing the dimensions that Greece could never touch, that Rome could never touch. This is, is true and eternal good news. And unlike all the other gospels that were really false gospels that had been preached for hundreds of years up until this point, this king's not going anywhere. And even when they crucify him, he's getting right back up again. And even now, 2,000 years later, his euangelion stands he is still on his throne. He is still the king. His kingdom has not passed away. It will never pass away. It's the kingdoms of this world that are passing away. So there you go. Amen. Did you know that? Isn't that helpful? So when Jesus comes, he's lifting up this phrase that's got energy. Ecclesia for church existed before. You got to read the history of it. And he did it on purpose. And he's saying, here's the good news. A king is coming. A king is coming. And he's going to bring a rule that's going to be totalitarian. It really is. It's, going to take it's, it's amazing. And let me give you little whispers from heaven. No more sickness. No more demonic oppression. Satan is gone. Death is gone through the resurrection. He gave us pictures of what this rule would be like and asked us to repent or change our mind to shift and turn, to begin to respond to this rule and this reign. 
And so we wanted to lay that out to you because when I say this, we are pro-salvation. This king, that that king would actually die for everybody, and it's an everlasting kingdom, an everlasting dominion. It's shocking how good the gospel is. But the gospel is not, again, just getting you saved and out of somewhere into somewhere. The gospel of the kingdom is that there's a kingdom hemorrhaging on planet earth right now. Daniel's going to call it a small little rock not cut out by human hands that becomes the largest mountain in the world. Or it's actually Nebuchadnezzar who sees that. And Daniel interprets it for him. And it's the kingdom of God. And so the kingdom's coming. So what we're announcing to the nations is, yes, a way to get free from their sins, but that's really so they can have entrance into and partnership in reigning in the kingdom that's coming. So the, we want to talk about this because we want some accuracy in our own life. And as we send missionaries everywhere, we're saying the atonement, Jesus died for your sins, be redeemed. Yes, we're saying that. But it's not all we're saying. It's not all we're saying. We're telling people, families, cities, and nations of the earth, the king is coming. The king is coming. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. There's a global government about to come and break darkness off the planet. And there's a new, pardon the language, sheriff in town. He's coming. And he's going to rule and he's going to reign. And so this, I'm, I'm reading multiple books by some people that are, are exploring this kind of deal. And they're talking about this culture of salvation has produced a ton of decisions for salvation and so little fruit in discipleship. 80%, uh, it's some number like that, resp that respond, uh, respond to, the, to the gospel of salvation. And then when you look at some of these people that respond, about 10 to 15% are actually having regular lives in the word, in holiness, in the name of deal. And you've heard all those numbers. I don't need to give you. There's all kinds of different ways of metrics to look at that. But you got a ton of people saying, yes, I'll take out of hell. But not many saying, yes, I'll take a new sovereign king to run my life. That's a different decision. And it's really predicated on how we present this thing. And so thank God he meets us where we are. He meets you where you're the woman, woman bleeding. He meets her at, he sees a good God. But it's, but it's the entry point. If we come short in this, we're going to have a bunch of grouchy, selfish believers who are looking for their way. And really just want to broker a deal with Yahweh to get out of fire. And he's doing more than that. He wants to deal with really the poison that's making us miserable. And the poison is, the manifestation is sin. Sin leads to death. But that's coming out of you subversively becoming sovereign in your own life. That you're your own ruler is the problem. And so he came to dethrone you. <laughs> to dethrone the nations from ruling and reigning over their own lives. And so if this gospel comes, I know that doesn't sell. It's sometimes not attractive. It should be the most attractive. because It's better than good entertainment and better than great water systems. What Jesus is about to bring. And actually, our own selfishness is what's killing us. But he's wanting to press in and to bring this gospel to the kingdom. So I'm just going to touch the son of man thing. I'm not going to do that. I don't feel like I'm supposed to do that. I think there was heat on what. So Nasser, would you come here? We're going to end this session together. I don't really know what that means. Okay. So grab that mic. <clears throat> and I, wanna, I do want to move into some, some lab time. I've got a couple things I want to minister in and we want to model. But I believe with all my heart. I'm going to make a statement and then you make a statement and do whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah. I believe with all my heart that the Lord, in, he's always been doing it. Forgive the exaggeration. That's what we do when we're up here. But he's restoring the gospel of the kingdom yes. into the mouths of the preachers in the earth. Yeah. He's restoring it. He's restoring fresh understanding. And it's going to hurt the population of Sunday mornings. But it's going to increase the glory of God all over the earth. Yeah. It really is. It's going to look like when this is restored, we're going backwards. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're actually going forward. 
It's actually better to have 12 loyal all in <laughs> than to have 12,000 who will leave when you say, eat my flesh, drink my blood. So impact is about to increase. Population go down just for a little bit, and then it's going to be great. But it's, I think, going to be connected to the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, it, this is, feels like preaching to the choir here because I know most of you all, you get this. You're, you're in with this. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you uh, look at how the gospel, and again, I'm talking about like the Bible word gospel, not how we sometimes use the word gospel, but how the gospel is, is articulated, expressed, and responded to both um, in the gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but also as you look into the, you know, in, in the book of Acts, how, how you see it articulated in, in all of the epistles and so on. Uh, I don't, what I see is, is what we're talking about. What I see is an invitation for all people, all tribes, all languages, all nations to recognize and submit to the lordship of this crucified and resurrected Jewish Messiah. Yes. That is the proclamation. And it's, you know, just absolute crazy talk. Right? I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine now knowing like what you know about this baggage around Evangelion? You know, when Paul is in Greece, where this whole thing started, and, and is, you know, preaching in Athens, like, you guys all need to understand, you're so smart, you Greeks. You've got, you, you're, you know, you covered all your bases with all these, these gods, known and unknown. And, 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 but let me tell you that the real God of all the earth, the one who's responsible for you even existing and even having a nation called Greece, who set your boundaries before, you know, you had any, you were anything. Uh, he, he's visited the planet. Um, he was a, a Jewish guy back in Judea that the Romans crucified. But now he's resurrected and he's alive forevermore. Mm. And, and if you'd be willing to submit now to his lordship and kingdom, resurrection is for you too. New life can, can happen for you too. And actually, you know, some of your philosophers, you know, think about what it would be like to actually know whatever the higher power is. Like, would it even be possible? And could you comprehend them? Or, or the higher power or powers, are they too transcendent, right? Well, well this, this God is, is so personal, like he became a man. Mm. And that implies something. Yes. That implies relationship, intimacy, and it's something that people of, of all, all tribes and nations have, have struggled to believe. And I think it's because this isn't just good news. It's the most outrageously amazing news on the planet. Uh, I, I recently did a study uh, uh, through Exodus um, and reflecting on Passover. And I was shocked because I noticed a detail on that story. I've read Exodus so many times. I'm sure many of you have too. And, and I've never noticed this before, that the first time that, that Moses um, confronts Pharaoh, like I always just had it in my head, and maybe it's because of the movies, whatever, like he just goes in, let my people go, and it's like, no, and then plagues, you know, all of this. But actually... The, the first time he pitches it to Pharaoh, what he actually says is, uh, hey, um, our, our God, Yahweh, by the way, we're on a first name basis with him. Um, he really wants his people, his people, Israel, uh, to come out into the wilderness and have a party with him. We're just going to celebrate. And then we'll come back afterwards. That's what he actually says, which is just like weird. Like mm. if you know the whole Exodus story, like is Moses lying? Like what, what is he doing? Like why is he saying that? Why doesn't he just say, hey, God's knocking on your door. He wants his people. You better let him go to Canaan or you're getting, you know, nuked from heaven. Like or something like that, you know. But instead, why does he use this language? 
And of course, when Pharaoh hears this, he's just like, what in the world kind of nonsense is this? What do you mean? And, and so then what Moses says again, what he says is a completely different story. If you look at it, he says, um, well, actually, um, our God, and this time he doesn't use the name, doesn't make it personal. Our, our God wants us to go make sacrifices to him um, in the wilderness. And if we don't do it, he's going to get mad at us and punish us. And we're scared. And so we got to go do this. And it's like, what is Moses? Like, what's he doing? with that. And as I read it and and prayed through it and and read some, you know, some Jewish commentary on that, what I realized was this was like so merciful um, on the part of God and Moses to to approach it this way. Moses' first pitch was he was trying to communicate to Pharaoh something that was just really radical. Mm. Like you as Pharaoh, here you are, a a semi-divine being in the eyes of the Egyptians, a literal, you know, embodiment, a a son of of the gods and and their divine representative on earth. And and you have this this idea of the gods as these just like powerful, dangerous, scary beings that are so, you know, far removed from us. But our God, we're on a first, we're like family with him. And, and he, he wants to just go out on camping trips with us and, and celebrate with us and have fun with us. He's a God of intimacy. That was Moses' way of trying to communicate to Pharaoh that our God isn't just one more God out there mm. that we have that seems foreign to you. He's special. He's unique. He's holy. He's holy. And I think the invitation was in that first statement that if this sounds good for you, how would you like to come with us? Mm. Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe you could join us. But Pharaoh doesn't get it. So then Moses speaks in language Pharaoh understands. Our God's mad and who knows what he'll do and he'll punish us and we've got to sacrifice. He just speaks in Pharaoh's language. Because mm. Pharaoh can't, he just can't even, he has no grid for the, 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 the with mercy, the grace, the, the, the love, the faithfulness, like everything about Yahweh that makes him so good. Mm. There is no God on earth like that. Yes. There is no power, there's no ruler, there's nothing, there's no one you're gonna find like our God. Mm. And that's the beauty of it. Like when we talk about like, oh, you gotta submit to him, you gotta take him as Lord, you can't just come in and say, well, I want out of, out of the fire. So, so yes, you know, because like, he isn't coming to be a dictator. But this is the beauty of it. Like, he is like the best dictator ever. Yes. Like you talk about benevolent dictators, right? Um, a, a, an eternal king. Judge. And judge and all of that who is so for you. Yes. So, so desperate to set you free from, from everything that, that has you tied down in bondage, everything that, that, that's wounding you, every, everything that, that you've been carrying your whole life. He wants to set you free from that so bad. He wants to rescue you from your worst self. And and he wants it so bad, he was willing to come here, suffer, bleed, and die on a cross just to open the door for you to come and just be showered, not just with like physical riches or, you know, eternal delights in heaven someday, but literally to make you his inheritor. Mm to adopt you as his child. Like, think about that for a moment. Mm. The king, the God, the creator of the whole universe and everything in it wants each one of you, wants to adopt you as his child Mm. and say, my my son, my daughter, all that I have is yours. Mm. Let's go have dinner. Mm. That's our God. It's you and Galen. That's good news. That's good news. But... The package deal is you've got to be willing to say you are the king. That's all right. That's right. And I'm not. So good. I always say that the, that the, you know, Jesus was crucified. The, the, the actual legal reason he was crucified was because he was a false king. But the truth is he is the only true king, and we all deserve to be on that cross because we've all tried to make ourselves kings. That's right and queens of our own lives. That's exactly we are the false. We were the false ones. But he died, an innocent one, to make us kings and queens in his kingdom, a royal priesthood. So good. Pray for us in this restoration of the gospel of the kingdom in our heart and understand the good and the power of it. Mm. 
Oh, Abba. Holy Father. You just, you blow us away mm. with how good you are, Lord. And forgive us that we, like, we, we sing it and, and we read about it in your, in your scriptures. But it's so easy for us to then go out from here and just live our lives and forget how amazing, how holy, how gloriously good you are. We should spend every, every moment of every day just simply praising you mm. out loud and under our breath for how holy, holy, holy yeah. is Yahweh, God Almighty. And so, Father, we just, we, we just want to recommit ourselves again mm. to your lordship. Jesus, Yeshua, yes. you are Lord yes. now and forevermore. Yeah. And we choose to bow our knee now in advance mm -hmm. of your second coming. Yeah. When you will come to judge the earth and evaluate how the investment, the deposit mm. of the very spirit, the very presence of God in us, yeah. how we spent that. Lord, help us to, to be wise and how we burn our days. And Lord, help us open our, our mouths to proclaim the euangelion, the good news of your kingdom, that you are king, that you do reign, despite what all the lying voices of this earth want to, the nation, why did the nations rage? We already know. Mm. And we already know where that's going mm. in Psalm 2. And so, Lord, let us, let us preach the gospel now and always by word, by deed, God, how we treat our, our coworkers, our employees, our neighbors, and especially how we treat uh, those who don't like us, those who speak out against us, those who criticize us, those who persecute us, God. Let us love them with the same love you first loved us and make intercession before you for each one of them, God. May this family, this kingdom continue to break out and break in all over the earth for your glory, Jesus. Mm. In your name we pray. Amen. I mean. Good. Bless you. Thanks, buddy. Have fun in Sudan. Um, I had one guy tell me, I love that you do lab time. It's so great because you don't just do the lecture, you do lab time. He was just so, he was like, that's just awesome. It's just awesome you do that. And then we had another guy that didn't like that we do that. And heard, a, heard a, actually uh, multiple people in a town that like thought it may be um, not heretical, but um, dangerous, danger, dangerous at best. We need to be careful about this lab time stuff and training people how to prophesy. You know what that makes me want to do? Yeah, we're going to do more. And the reason we're going to do more is because of what my argument was to them. I want to help bring order to what might be abuse of prophetic use. And I want to I call out of the closet those that are not doing it at all. I want to activate. I want the evangelicals to begin to play. And I want the Pentecostal charismatics to have some order. Just do. I'm not sure I've got the, I don't have the corner on this. But this is worth doing because this is a predominant thing in the, theme in the Bible. Sons and daughters will prophesy. It's all over the place. And we've just been through a year of mess around this a little bit. So we're going to do this. Um, Emma, make your way up here real quick. Can you, is Emma in the room? Come here, Emma. Um, a theme was developing. And it's a Holy Spirit theme for tonight. This will be the third confirmation for it. And it's for you. She's going to talk about her for uh, 30 seconds to a minute, about what happened to her. And it's about you because something's happening that we want you to hear. Yeah, after just listening to all the updates about who's all going out and stuff, I realize there's a theme going on about plans being changed, um, kind of just drastically and crazy. Um, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, I actually shared about going to Canada and being a missionary there with YWAM. And last week, um, Canada completely shut down, and the school I was going to completely shut down. Um, and then I had two offers from two different schools in the States asking me to come and work for them. Um, and so now I am moving to South Carolina. South in Carolina? South Carolina. Not Niagara Falls. Never even been there. Um, so the Lord was like, hey, we're going to go here. And I was like, okay. Okay. Um, 
and just super amazing um, just seeing the father's heart of he's a good father and he wants to give good gifts. And then um, Nasser made the comment about um, it's the Lord's money and um, I'm sure he's not going to be upset about it. And almost as soon as he said that, the Lord was like, I'm not a father of just getting by. I'm a father of abundance. Mm. Um, and I feel like that's just a huge thing because as we're raising money to go on missions trips, being on staff or becoming missionaries who need monthly income, it's not about the father just getting you by. He's going to give to you abundantly of what you need, even if it feels like maybe the first time of where you were supposed to go, you didn't hear the Lord. And I've had people ask me that, like, oh, did you really hear the Lord that you're going to, supposed to go to Canada? And someone was like, I feel like it's more the Lord you're going to South Carolina because mm -hmm. the Father wanted to bless you with something, and now you're being blessed by this. So, so awesome. Yeah. Good job, Emma. Remember, Emma, as a other deal, if you feel connected, something hit your heart, please talk to him and respond to the Holy Spirit. She's a missionary. The point is, three times tonight, change of orders. I could bring some other people up here. We're just dealing with another couple. Massive. Just, what, and then they're like, did I miss it? Did I not? Did the window close? Did I, what, is God punishing us because we can't get to there? And it's like this big dilemma. And I, I love what Emma just said is that often the Lord just, he just wants Abraham to take the kid and lay him on the altar. Are we going to go all the way there to sacrifice? Maybe not. Okay. Did God lie? Sacrifice your son. Was that a lie? No. But sometimes it's just obeying the next thing and God can shift the orders. I'm going to pray right now and ask that many of you would have the ability to have the limberness to move and respond to the checks of the Holy Spirit. Often he's just training us about his leadership. He's not playing around with us or playing games, but he's just playing. We think this is in our heart. This is what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. And it doesn't happen. It's like, what in the world was that? Well, I think it may not have been about the thing as much as it is about your heart. Are you listening are you able to obey? Are you able to respond when he wants you to respond? Because it's, a, lastly, it's an interesting thing how when they moved around for 40 years, sometimes the tent was set up for two days, two weeks, two months, and that thing was a chore to set up. It was a big deal to set that thing up, the tabernacle, and move around that desert. So we don't get to decide the schedules and often the destinations, but the Lord does. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for anybody in the room that needs to respond to a change of orders. The orders, have come, the best we knew it was this, but we're, we're shifting. Lord, I pray that we would have the humility and the sensitivity to, to respond, to shift and change to something we had predicted was going to happen. God, deliver the body of Christ from any pride or stubbornness of just trying to get, we, we just want to be with you. Help us to be with you in the moment, Lord. And I pray for anyone in this room right now, and I know we'll hear the stories later, that needs empowerment in their heart to begin to shift and go another direction. I just ask that they would hear that in Jesus' name. Amen. Coral shirt boy and wife, could you come here? I know I should know your names, but I don't. I barely know the names of my kids. No, yeah, you're looking behind you. It's you in the jean, yeah. Could you, you guys mind coming up here? Please don't mind. Um, we've met multiple times. You're from, tell, tell people what your names are and where you're from. Uh, uh, Brian and Tammy Utsi, and we're from Hutchinson or the Yoder area. Utsi, are you Mennonite people? Yes. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> so, so yeah, and you drive down from, you're from the Yoder area. Yeah, so we're really glad you come in and dip in on this, and it's just a beaut uh, you guys have been around for a while. You were when we were at Christchurch, weren't you, hanging around a little bit when we were with the other location? I thought you went over there a couple oh, times. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, so here we are. Um, so I, um, I wanted to just really quick uh, model this thing again, and, and again, it, uh, again for, from the compliment and the criticism that I got this week. It's these kinds of things that drive the evangelicals nuts. It's what I'm going to say right now. But it's what I say after it that's kind of fairly important, I think. So I'm looking around a room, and you guys stand out to me. Actually, when you walked in during the prayer meeting, I think you came in, you really stood out to me really strong. I had a strong impression in my heart, a picture. I don't even like the vision. I ain't got to say that. I just had a strong, my heart drawn toward them, and I had this picture. I had this sense of them walking down a path, walking through a, a bit of a veil, and moving, and when they came through the veil, they looked younger than they look right now. And you look great. You look great. But they look like about 10 to 20 years younger. Now, what is that? 
So I know one of my buddies that's a little critical now, they are my buddies, by the way, is going to go, what were you talking about? What's that? Walking down a path, and then they were doing the deal. Here's what I think. I want to follow that up with this. This is what I think it means. I could have said this to them in the hallway, but I'm doing it in front of you. As I'm asking some of you to pray about right now, because they're having a moment right now. They've come a long time. Have we ever done with this with you guys publicly? Yeah. So um, you've seen us do this publicly before, right? Yeah. So this is probably in a gauge. I like to say it's like a tipping over a domino of a process that's not all tonight that's going to be in their life. It's been my experience and people. And so Jesus is already doing great things in them. We didn't just start great things, but we're just getting in on a moment right now. I feel like this means they're walking the walk of faith and that they're going to walk through the veil, the, that there's a seasonal shift here in 2021 that is connected to Bible verses like Isaiah chapter 40. So remember this. Blessed are those who wait on the Lord for he will renew their strength and restore their youth like the eagles. It's a strange deal. It really is. It's in Psalms 103 also. And uh, Psalms 103 says, I'll refresh your life with good things so that, you're, you, so that you're renewed, your strength, your youth is renewed like the eagles. So I feel like he's, uh, the Lord is uh, Holy Spirit, which is Bible. You had Bible. You didn't need me to say this. I get it. But I get to be the body with you and say it to put an exclamation mark on it. Does everybody understand what I just said right there? They don't need, they've got the Holy Spirit and they've got their Bible. I get it. But when we step into these moments and we speak these words of affirmation, it's like we put an exclamation point on what is already there and call them to attention. It's a great way to be the body of Christ. So I'm, uh, that doesn't mean there's not trial or, or things coming. We all have tribulation on the planet, okay? But I feel like as you're walking the walk of faith that there's some refreshment coming that's going to restore your youth, your energy, your strength. I don't know what all that means. You, I don't have to know what that means. I just say it to you, and may the Lord bless you. So, Lord, I pray you bless my brother and sister in Jesus' name, the Yitzis. Lord, I'm asking in Jesus' name, bless them. Thank you for the promises of their life that's over our lives. It's not like you're not doing it with everybody else. But you are saying to, in my heart this to them, that where there's a sense of weariness and longevity that's brought weariness, that you want to, on the walk of faith, let them move through um, to another place of waiting on you where you give them refreshment in their hearts. Spiritually revive them. Spiritually touch them. Spiritually renew their strength and renew their youth. We know that chronologically right now they're not going backwards and going to look that like they're in their 20s. But I know you can give strength. Like you, Caleb said, I'm 85 and I feel the strength of when I was 40. That was in the old covenant. So I just pray, Lord, for refreshment for them in any area they felt weariness. And that you would bless them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So do you want to say anything um, that was weird? I don't know what you're talking about. That's, I don't care what you say, really. You want to say that? Do you want anything to say? We just have some business decisions to make. Are they the easy ones? Steps. Are they hard ones? Are they? Yeah. It's just, just next decisions. Yeah. 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 Well, we, we've had a, a business for about 20 years. It's, mm -hmm. We've been very well blessed. And, mm -hmm. and you know, actually, I mean, we've kind of talked like, what's our next step? You know, we're. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, I mean, it's kind of been on our minds in you know, the last six months. It's awesome. It's awesome. So, so you're not rookies anymore. You've got a little bit of longevity behind you. And here we go. Here we go. So does anybody want to say anything to them for the three to five minutes they've been up here that the Lord's put on your heart? Yeah, just yeah, go, sweetie. Of a water tower. What, now, so she sees a water tower. What is that? What do you think that means? Christy? Yeah. Sounds like supply to me. Mm -hmm. A source. And supply that's 
good and full and amen. Did you just wave at me? Excuse me? So while they were up here, you kept hearing that. What, you're going to give, going to give, going to give to them over and over. Oh, now Ronnie's jumped on her metaphor, saddled up and taken it for a ride. And he's saying they are the water child, that they're going to be supplied for people. For the next what? No, I didn't finish that. Okay. <laughs> but the ground is shifting. And that's good. Yeah, because there's some decisions to be made. Good. Anything else? Okay. So when we do that, um, you want to make sure that you're, you know, speaking in love. That you're being is biblical. I didn't hear anything unbiblical about that. There's principles all over that. And these are to encourage them and to edify them. Do you decently feel encouraged and edified? So, so Father, I pray in Jesus' name, bless my brother and sister, um, and I pray that the little pieces that the body of Christ did, we could have done this without the camera going in front of a crowd, but whatever that was in the midst of this 20 years and now some decisions, I'm asking this would accelerate their priesthood, the testimony of Jesus and their life in you. Thank you for your abundance uh, for them and what's coming and how you're going to use them to supply and to bless others. Lord, I know it's their heart to do that. So bless them, watch over them, and minister to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Bless you, guys. It was long overdue. Usually we do that with new people. So, yeah. So I wanted to encourage you as you go um, to respond to and not try to make anything dramatic. It's a, such a big deal. Um, to work the thing and try to juice it up so that it's a big, powerful, profound moment. Uh, most of my major moments in life have been in the casual regular, regularness, I don't know if that's a word, of life. And just these little pieces coming together, putting the puzzle together. And so I just want to say this. You may have a package to deliver to somebody. We use that a lot. Just don't miss your appointment. Just say it to them. Turn it over to them. Let them go pray. They go pray, and then they can decide, well, that was no help to me, or it was help to me. Either way, we just want to serve them in their journey as they follow Jesus. Does that make sense? We're not trying to exalt our prophetic ministry. We're trying to serve them as they follow the Lord. Now, last little thing as you go. This thing of changing order, some of you are going to meditate on some things. Listen, please, please. Don't some of you that are headed on destinations that you feel fine about start doing the second guessing thing. Oh my gosh, everybody was changing and equipped that night. <laughs> I got to change my plans. No, you don't. The Lord, maybe you're right on track. Amen? You're just right, right, right on track. Don't do that. You don't need to be the Holy Spirit in your life. If he wants to check you, he's big enough to check you in your heart. Okay, he can shift you. And that's what happened with all these people moved in circumstances and moved in their hearts. And the Lord can do that with you. Amen. Let's all stand. If you want to partner with us financially, there are offering baskets in the back. Don't feel like you need to do that at all. Father, thank you in Jesus' name for this night of prayer that we got to pray for the body of Christ, pray for the earth. Thank you for the testimonies. Again, bless Ellie and bless Emma and bless Nasser as they all go to different locations. Bless our brothers and sisters in the nations. We love you. We thank you. I pray everything that was from the flesh tonight, because we're, we're just, we know in part and see in part. Let, it, let, let everybody forget that as quick as you can. And I pray everything that was from you in the kingdom and was a moment. I'm always m amazed at the little phrases that went into people's hearts. I pray none of that be stolen away by the birds of the air. Let the word of God go deep in our heart, find good soil, and produce 30, 60, and 100 fold for your glory. Lord, we love you. We bless you, and we leave this room right now in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.